Today's lesson is on percent problems and it will cover page 24 in your jump math book. The first question is just going to ask you to simply calculate. So it might start with 90% minus 75% plus 34%. And we know that percentages we can just add and subtract as if they're normal numbers as long as they all have a percent sign. So what would be my first step to calculating this question? So I'd start with 90 minus 75, which gives us 15%. And then I need to add the 34%, which is going to give us 49%. And I have to make sure that I have the percent sign in my answer. If I don't, then it will be wrong. It doesn't equal 49, it equals 49%. Question number two starts by asking you what the sales tax is where you live. So for everyone, pause right now and write down in your book at number two, our sales tax in British Columbia is 12%. Okay, we have GST and PST. Then our question is going to be to calculate the amount of tax you would pay on each item. So if we had a $20 item, we need to figure out how much tax we would pay. How can we do this? So our first step is to multiply 12 times 20, and that gives us... Two, and then we add them up, so zero plus nothing is... 240. Now I have one more step before I know what the actual percentage is. My last step is to divide it by 100 and that will give me 2.4. So I'll need to pay another $2.40. And the reason I need to divide by 100 is because 12% is like 12 out of 100. So you can either multiply by 12 and then divide by 100, or you could just multiply it by the decimal, which is 0.12, and that will give you the same answer. So one important thing to remember is this doesn't ask you what the total cost would be, it just asks you how much tax you would pay. So you don't need to add the 240 onto the $20 yet. Question number three tells you that three-fifths of the student elections voted for Laura, 12% voted for Zamir, and the rest voted for Shahan. Now we need to figure out what percent voted for Shahan. So what could our first step be? So our first step is to turn three-fifths into a percent, and we do that by making it into a fraction out of 100. Because we multiply 5 by 20, we also multiply 3 by 20, which gives us 60. So as a percent, this would be... 60%. Then we need to add up the percentages that we know. So we have 60% and 12%. So that gives us 72%. And our final step, so we then need to figure out what's left. So if we take 100%, because that's one whole, and subtract 72, then that is going to give us 28. So 28% voted for Shahan. So question number four gives us a chart, and we have to look at what we know to figure out what we don't know. So we know that the painter spent $500. So we can start filling in some of these boxes. With you, I'm only going to focus on filling in the row on brushes. So, so our first step is to figure out what percent 125 is out of 500 because they spent 125 on brushes out of $500. So to find the percent, I need to divide by, I divide by five, and so that would give me 25 out of 100, which tells me that is 25%. So then, we know that this means our fraction is 25 out of 100, and if we wanted to simplify it, we could divide by 25, and that gives us 1 fourth. So either number is fine to have in your fraction. 
Using this, you can now add up your fractions to figure out what the canvas is and figure out how much money is spent from each part. I will let you fill in the rest of the chart on your own. So in question number five, a student hopes to raise $200 for his favorite charity. He already has $60 from having a garage sale. What percent of the $200 does he still need to raise? So we need to figure out what percentage he has left. First, we're going to figure out what percent he already has. So he has $60 out of 200. Now to turn this into a percent, we need to make it a fraction out of 100. So what would I divide by to get there? I would divide it by two. So 60 divided by two is 30. Now I, he has 30%. So what percent would be left? Well, if I'm trying to get to 100%, I would need to add, so it would be 70%. My seven looks a little bit more like a nine. So uh, the student still needs to raise 70%. We're just going to fill out the beginning of this um, chart and we're going to look at how they found the numbers for the sweater. So the two pieces of information they'll give you is the regular price and the discount percent. So we need to figure out the discount amount. So we need to figure out what 10% of 52 is, and we can remember that the order for that is to go 52 times, one, times 10, which gives us 520, and then we need to divide that by 100. So that's going to give us 5.20. So this will be our discount price. So the money that that 10% equals is 520. Now, how do we figure out the sale price? To figure this out, we need to have our regular price, which is 52, and we need to subtract our sale price, which is 520. So zero minus zero is zero. I'll regroup, 10 minus two is eight. I'll regroup again, 11 minus five is six. And we have four. So the sale price would be 46.80. So number seven is about Simone. And she bought a bass guitar at a 20% discount. That means she had 20% off. She paid $600. And we want to know how many dollars did she save by buying the guitar at a discount. So we could turn this into a couple of fractions, right? So if she had 20% off, what percent of the cost did she actually pay? So to figure out what she paid, we can take the full price, which would be 100%, subtract 20%, and that gives us 80. So as a fraction, that would be like 80 out of 100. Now, we have our second fraction. The $600 is what she paid. So does the $600 represent the 80% or the whole cost? Because the 600 is the discount price, which is the 80%, we're going to make sure it's beside the 80 in our fraction. Now we have our unknown bottom number. So because we can't just multiply by a whole number from 80 to 600, we, we are going to use our fish. So the fish, the first step is to multiply. So we're going to look at the number that we started at opposite the question mark, 60, and we're going to multiply it by the next number that we come to. So that's going to be 600 times 
100. So that is going to give us, so that's going to give us 60,000. Now step two is to divide. So we're going to take the number that we ended with and we're going to follow our fish up and we're going to divide it by 80. And that is going to give us, it's 750. So the number we end up with here goes in our space. So the total cost would have been 750. She only paid $600. So how much money did she save? She saved $150. So remember, there's quite a few steps, but to follow the fish, make sure one end of the tail is at the blank and you multiply and then divide to get your answer. I'm gonna let you try the rest of the questions on your own, but if you are at home and need help, feel free to reach out for a Zoom meeting. If you're at school, come and see me.